Cool. Let's jump right into it. Hi. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm at Dinges on the internet, and I work at Ant. Um, we're a consultancy in Vancouver, Washington, and I'm going to be talking about 10 new things in Active Record. Uh, for each thing, I'll have a slide that basically shows what was added. There will be a PR number, and there will be the GitHub username of the person that added it. Um, I really encourage you, if you see something interesting, to go take a look at the PR. It provides kind of a backstory for the feature and just kind of makes for interest, interesting reading. And disclaimer up front, I'm probably not going to pronounce anybody's GitHub username correctly. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce my own, so I think that's probably <laughs> expected. Um, so here we go. Uh, number one, Rails DB Prepare, added in PR35768 by Roberto Miranda. Um, basically, if the database exists, it runs any pending migrations. If the database doesn't exist, it runs. I'm on. It's just for the recording. It's not. I'm not going through any speakers. Um, the database doesn't exist. It runs the DB setup break task, which creates the database and it loads either the schema RB or the structure SQL file, depending on which one your app uses, and then it runs the DBC break task. Number two, the Rails DB seed replant break task is new, added in PR34779 by Bogdan Vioviv. And rake DB seed replant basically truncates all the tables, which means it deletes all the data in the table, but it doesn't reset the auto increment counter. The auto increment counter, if you don't know, if you were to say create a new user and that user got assigned ID of five, the auto increment counter is what keeps track of what ID to assign to the next user that you create. And after it deletes all the data, uh, DB seed replant runs the seed file. Number three, um, auto switch database connections. This is added in 35073 by Eileen Codes. Um, this could honestly probably be a talk all on its own, so I'm just going to look at it from a really uh, high level. It adds configuration to automatically switch your database connection. Um, kind of the overall concept is if you have read requests coming into your database and there hasn't been a write request for some number of minutes, then the, the auto switch will autom automatically send the read request to a read replica versus your primary database. And this feature kind of adds a framework to support that. Oops. Um, so the configuration is dependent on the request type, read versus write, and the time since the last database write. The application can specify a custom resolver, and the resolver kind of decides what parameters uh, define when to switch between the primary database and the uh, secondary databases. And the application can also specify an operations class, which is responsible for keeping track of the timestamps. Um, for the last database write. And the resolver takes the operations class as an argument uh, to kind of figure out it, its stuff. And it comes with some default configuration options. This database selector, all of these are on uh, that active record configuration. The database selector here um, specifies a delay of two seconds. So that would be if you get a read request within, or two seconds more after the last write request you would get, uh, your request would get sent to one of the replicas. And then you can specify the resolver to use and the operations uh, class to use if you're overriding. Otherwise, you can just use the defaults. Um, number four, which is negative scopes for enums. This is added in 35381 by DHH. Um, so Active Records enum already provides a bit of functionality. If you don't know what an enum value is, it, it's basically stored in the database as an integer. Um, here we have a post class with a status enum, and the value that you set is a symbol. It's either drafted, active, or trashed. And each symbol maps to an integer uh, in the order they're defined. So drafted would be a 0, active would be a 1, trashed would be a 2. And 
Uh, Enum historically has provided scopes, so you could do post.drafted, and that would do where status is drafted, uh, post-active, where status is active, uh, same for trashed. And then setting it, you could do post.status equals the symbol drafted, and then you could do post.drafted, the predicate. Uh, if you don't know what a predicate method is, it typically ends in a question mark and returns true or false. Um, so post.drafted would turn true there since that's what we just set it to. Um, some more fun facts about enums. You can also, well, if you, if you query the value of an enum, it returns a string. And you can also set the value with an integer that corresponds um, to the enums you defined, the position of the, the symbol that you defined. Um, you can also set the value as a string. And if you do class.statuses, that will return a hash with uh, strings as keys and integers as values that kind of uh, defines your enum mapping. So this new feature defines negative scopes for enums. So you could do things like post not drafted and that'll generate a query where not status drafted, uh, same for not active and not trashed. Number five, uh, active record extract associated, PR35784 again by DHH. This one is really just shorthand for preloading an association and then collecting that association. If you're not familiar with collect, it is the exact same thing as map. They both call the same C subroutine under the hood. So if we had like a canonical blog application where a user has many comments and a comment belongs to post, you could do user post equals user dot comments and extract the associated post. Number six, this is Active Record Relation Annotate, PR35617 by Matty Oho. And Annotate, it basically gives you a way to add comments to the generated SQL. So here in my example, I've got user.annotate, any admin will do, find by admin true. Kind of has a nice song-like ring to it, but I'm not going to sing it for you. Um, and that will generate this SQL, select users.star from users, where users admin is true, and there's the comment, any admin will do, um, with a limit of one, because find by just returns one record. Uh, number seven, active record relation touch all, PR31513 by FATCODEMA. Um, it basically touches all the records in the scope that it's chained onto, you can pass a list of columns uh, that you want to be touched. And you can optionally provide a time to use as the value that you're setting. Um, the time will default to the current uh, time in the application's time zone, or active records time zone specifically. Uh, you can set the time zone with that configuration option that defaults to UTC. Um, so here's some usage examples. Again, user where admin true, I'm using the same query for all of them. You do touch all, and that will just touch the updated at, uh, column for each, each user that is an admin um, with the current time in UTC, assuming that's what your configuration specifies. You can do touch all, pass it columns, verify that and update it at, and it will touch both columns. Um, you can touch all and pass it a time, and that would stamp the updated at column with uh, whatever time it was one day ago, 8.11.25 right now. Um, you can touch all, pass it a column and a time. Um, so a few different options. Number eight, which is active record, delete by, and destroy by, which is PR35316 by Abhe Nikam. And these delete by and destroy by were, or are intended to provide symmetry with the find by family of uh, methods. But in my opinion, it doesn't behave the same. So here's a SQL generated by user.findbyadmintrue. It basically selects a user from users where admin is true and limits one, so it returns one user. And here's the SQL for delete by admin true. It basically deletes every user that's an admin. So that's something to be aware of. Um, 
the source code for that basically just passes the arguments to where args and calls delete all on the result of that. Um, number nine is endless range support and where PR34906 by Greg Navis. Um, Ruby 2.6 added endless ranges. So you do things like zero dot dot nil and the size of that is infinite. Or you can just leave the nil off and zero dot dot and kind of leave it open ended. And that's also infinite. So this feature, um, previously if you wanted to get like a player where the player's level is greater than some, greater than or equal to some min level, you'd probably do some kind of SQL interpolation like this. And with this new syntax, you can kind of write more idiomatic Ruby where player, player where level is in this min level dot dot infinite range. And finally, number 10, which is implicit ordering. PR34880 by Atikin. And when calling finder methods like uh, first, last, or find by, Rails implicitly orders it by the primary key. Um, so that can do unexpected things if your primary key is not an integer, if it's something like a UUID, uh, sorting by that. It's kind of up there, you don't really know what you're gonna end up with. So implicit ordering lets you specify a default order to use in situations like that. Um, things to note, this is not a default scope. So you don't need to use reorder later to, to change the ordering. And it also doesn't apply to queries that don't rely on implicit ordering. Like it, if you set this, it won't affect the ordering of a where clause. And you'd use it like this. Like if you had categories where typically a category might just be displaying names, so it might make sense to have an implicit ordering by name. And if you did category.last, it would select categories.star from categories order by categories name descending and do a limit one. So that's basically kind of reverse of alphabetical sort. It would grab you the, if your last category started with a Z, that's what, what would get returned. And that's it.